hello and welcome back to the master civil engineering and in this video we will learn that what will be the change in the effective stress when the level of the water table fluctuates in the ground i have been given a question which states that for the subsoil condition shown in the figure below we have to find the change in the value of the effective stress at the bottom of the clay assuming that the unit weight of water is 10 kN per meter cube if the water table rises up to the ground surface water table is lowered by 2 meter and water table rises up to an elevation of 1 meter above the ground surface you can see the subsoil conditions in which we have a two layered soil first is the sand which is extending from 0 meter to 5 meter and thereafter the clay which is extending from 5 meter to 8 meter initially the water table is located at a depth of 3 meter below the ground surface okay the first thing which we will do is that we will find the unit weight of different layers. So first uh, total unit weight of the partially saturated sand. This is given as gamma T is equal to G plus SC divided by 1 plus E into gamma W. G is the uh, this specific gravity of solids of sand particles which is 2.65. And S is the degree of saturation okay, of the sand above the water table which is 40% or 0.4. And E is the void ratio, which is 0 0.6. This gives me the total uh, unit weight of this partially saturated sand above the water table as 18.1 kN per meter cube. Saturated unit weight of sand, this will be given as G plus E divided by 1 plus E into gamma W. G value of G is 2.65 and value of void ratio is 0 0.6, which gives me the value of saturated unit weight of sand below the water table as 20.3 kN per meter cube. Saturated unit weight of clay, this is given as G into 1 plus W divided by 1 plus WG into gamma W. So the value of G for this uh, uh, clay, this is 2.7 and W, this is the water content for this uh, clay, which is 0 0.45. Okay, this gives me the value of the saturated unit weight of clay as 17.67 kN per meter cube. After finding the unit weight of these three layers, we will first find the uh, effective stress at the bottom of the clay for the initial condition, okay? When the water table is located at a depth of 3 meter below the ground surface. So, at Z is equal to 8 meter. Total stress, this will be equal to total stress of this partially saturated sand multiplied by the uh, depth of this partially saturated sand, which is 3 meter plus unit weight of saturated sand multiplied by the depth of this uh, saturated sand plus unit weight of clay multiplied by the depth of this clay layer which is 3 meters putting values we get the total stress value uh, for the initial condition as 147.91 kilopascal pore water pressure at the bottom of the clay this will be equal to unit weight of water multiplied by the depth of water between the water table and the bottom of the clay so it is 5 meter so it will be 10 to 5 which is 50 kilopascal and effective stress this is total stress minus the pore water pressure which is equal to 147.91 minus 50 and the value is 97.91 kilopascal this is the value of effective stress at the bottom of the clay for the initial condition now for the case first when the water table rises up to the ground surface so when the water table rises to the ground surface this partially saturated sand will also become saturated so you have to take the total stress as unit weight of saturated sand multiplied by the total depth of sand layer that is from 0 to 5 meter because now this 3 meter this is also a saturated sand plus saturated unit weight of clay multiplied by the uh, 3 meter which is the depth of the clay okay this will remain same so it is 20.3 multiplied by 5 plus 17.67 multiplied by 3 which is 154.51 kilopascal. Pore water pressure, okay, since the water table is now at the ground surface, so it will be unit weight of water multiplied by the total depth of water which is now 8 meters. So 10 into 8 which is 80 kilopascal effective stress, this is total stress minus pore water pressure so it will be 154.51 minus 80 and this is equal to 74.51 kilopascal if you compare it to the earlier 
condition that is for initial condition you can see the effective stress has decreased and the change in the effective stress initial effective stress was 97.91 kilopascal and uh, effective stress in this condition that is when the water table rises uh, rises up to the ground surface this 74.51 kilopascal so change in the effective stress is 23.4 kilopascal so you have to remember when the water table rises in the ground surface value of effective stress decreases for the next condition that is when the water table is lowered by two meter now the water table if you lower it by uh, two meter it will be at the top of the clay okay but this portion of the sand since this was initially saturated this will again remain saturated okay it will not change to the partially saturated condition it will still remain in the saturated condition so total stress this will be equal to uh, unit weight of partially saturated sand which is from 0 to 3 meter plus uh, unit weight of saturated sand which is from 3 meter to 5 meter plus unit weight of saturated clay multiplied by the depth okay which is from 5 meter to 8 meter so putting values we get the value of total stress in this condition as 147.91 kilopascal which is same as uh, for the initial condition okay so you have to remember that when the water table is lower this sand this will still remain saturated pore water pressure now water table is at the top of the clay so pore water pressure this will be unit weight of water multiplied by the uh, depth of the water which is only now 3 meters so it will be 10 into 3 which is 30 kilopascal effective stress this will be the total stress minus the unit weight of water so it will be 147.91 minus 30 which is equal to 117.91 kilopascal if you can see that this value this is greater than the initial condition so change in the effective stress this is equal to 117.91 minus 97.91 kilopascal which is the effective stress in the initial condition so change will be 20 kilopascal so you have to remember when you lower the water table effective stress will increase and for the third condition in which we are assuming that the water table this rises up to an elevation of one meter above the ground surface okay in the third condition you are assuming that water table this is above the ground surface for an elevation of one meter so total stress in this case since this sand this will become saturated that is this partially saturated sand from 0 to 3 meter this will also become saturated so total stress this will be unit weight of saturated sand multiplied by 5 okay that is from 0 to 5 meter plus unit weight of saturated clay multiplied by 3 plus you have to in this condition consider the weight of the water which is uh, gamma w into 1 sorry not 8 this is gamma w into 1 okay the weight of the water which is uh, having a depth of 1 meter above the ground surface so you have to consider this weight of water this is gamma w into 1 not gamma w into 8 so total stress will be 20.3 into 5 plus 17.67 into 3 plus 10 into 1 okay and the value will be 164.51 kilopascal pore water pressure this will be equal to unit weight of water multiplied by the total depth of the water total depth of the water is water table is one meter above the ground surface and uh, depth of this uh, ground okay below depth of this uh, layers below the ground surface this is eight meters so total depth of water will be one meter above the ground plus eight so it will be nine gamma w into 9 so pore water pressure is 10 into 9 which is 90 kilopascal effective stress this will be total stress which is 164.51 minus the pore water pressure this is 90 so effective stress will be 74.51 kilopascal so this effective stress this is exactly the same for the condition first that is when the water table rises up to the ground surface okay so change in effective stress this will be equal to effective stress in the initial condition which is 97.91 minus effective stress when the water table rises up to an elevation of one meter above the ground surface which is equal to 23.4 
uh, kilo pascal okay so you have to remember that when the water table this rises above the ground surface okay so it will not affect the value of the effective stress okay so any fluctuation in the level of the water table above the ground surface this would not result in any change in the effective stress at any depth within the soil deposit okay because we can find out that the effective stress in this condition and effective stress in the first condition that is when the water table rises up to the ground surface is same okay so when the water table rises up to the ground surface effective stress decreases when the water table that is is lowered effective stress increases and if the water table rises above the ground surface it will not change the effective stress value at any depth within the soil deposit so this is how you can find the uh, value of uh, change in effective stress if the level of water table fluctuates i hope this solution video was clear and you definitely learn something new from this video if you still have doubts you can write them in the comment box okay and i will be happy to answer it thanks for watching my videos and stay tuned